What's up guys, Lost here. So today, um, it's just a quick one. We are just adding uh, sort of the turn based mechanics in. So you know, after we move, uh, we then can't move again until we hit a, an end turn button, so to speak. And then obviously we can move again. Um, so this is what we're just doing today. Just ready to implement um, uh, the AI, probably in the next episode, I would imagine. Um, so yeah, enjoy the video guys, and let me know what you think. So now I want to start making this project actually turn based. So what I want to do is in um, parent player, I want two new variables. Uh, I want an a moved variable and an attacked variable. Now what we'll do is we'll just say if the player has moved, then we can no longer move again that turn. And if we've attacked, then we can't attack again that turn. That's going to be the, the, the basic principle behind this. Um, so what I what I think we should first do then is when we come to move, which should be down here, yeah. So when we click on a hex move, we'll destroy all the hexes and then set moved to true. And at this point, uh, we shouldn't be able to move anymore. But first, oh, actually, what we should have done, um, when we left click a character, this one, we kind of need to say, um, in fact, no, we don't. What we should have done, what we should do is we'll just say in here, say if uh, if moved is false, then we'll do all of this in the script. Okay. Good stuff. Oh, no, actually, no, that's not going to work. The reason that won't work is because um, if we just did if if moved is false over here, uh, up there, sorry, the way we're creating the attack squares won't work, so that'll just mean that um, all the attacks, the, the attack square will never be created in the first place. So the the attack could still be false, but moved is true, but and then, so the attack square won't even, you know, get created. So what we should do then is just down here, we'll just say if uh, moved is true, uh, then with object uh, hex move instance destroy. Now in theory um, you should never, obviously they're all still going to create and then they'll get destroyed, but you shouldn't see that because it's, it's all happening within the same frame, so technically this should just work. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's let's test that out and see if I'm right. All right, then. So Deadpool can be the guinea pig, I guess. So it should be able to move. And if we click again, yeah. All right, sweet. So that that works. All right, and then what we'll do here is we will let's just say if um attacked. Oops. Oh no, that's not gonna work, is it? Uh. Um, because now we're in with hex move. All right, I tell you what. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Let's just at the bottom. We'll just go if um, attacked is true, uh, and then we'll just do the the same thing. Uh, with hex attack. Uh, I mean, in all fairness, th this could be better optimized because, I mean, first of all, we, we could just do all this differently. Uh, but second of all, with this attacked, I feel like. Yeah, that that's that's not good. Let's do it like this instead. Let's do it like this. Um, so obviously this this for loop this is just for creating the object's hex attacks. So let's just say if um, object uh, control dot player selected dot attacked is false, uh, and then we'll only create the um, hex attacks. The attack hex, sorry, if uh, the player has not attacked. Okay, that that's what this will do is so state and object control dot play selected and then dot attacked. So yeah. So if it's false, we'll create the hex attacks. Uh, and what I want to do actually is ju I'm just gonna disable this and I'm just gonna see if that worked. Of course it didn't work because we never set <laughs> attacked to uh, true derp. So let's just do it at the bottom, I guess, uh, actually. So yeah, we've right clicked if we're in a legal position and then 
Um, with attack. All right. Wants to be here. So let's just go attacked. Now equals true. And let's just pop that in the bottom one as well. Okay, so now it should work. Let's try that. Okay, so it did work, um, except we now have um, a slight problem. So the first thing that it does is um, once you attack, the, I've noticed that the uh, the hexes don't delete, don't destroy themselves, so we'll have to do that first. And also what I've noticed is um, once we re-click Deadpool, instead of it being the attack hex, it will be, um, you know, the move hex instead and that's obviously because uh, in here this is now true and so we don't create the hex attacks um, however that's fine because we're going to re-enable this at the bottom if moved true and then what we're going to say what I want to do actually is I also want to say if we attack then moved is also true and then we've used up that character's turn then you see that's the way I want to balance this obviously you're free to do whatever you like but this is how I want to do it Alright, and then in player 10, what we want to do as well um, is after we've right clicked uh, like the um, uh, an enemy, we then want to just use um, script hex destroy like that. And then it'll just destroy all the hexes again. So, so that should be okay. And actually, you know, I should probably just test that again. So, um,. What I want to do then is just uh, disable this at the bottom, and I'm just going to test that that works. All right, so that's absolutely smashing. That now works properly. So let's re-enable that at the bottom, and then what we want to do is in object control, we're going to need to look for a key press, and we want to look for uh, let's just say um, letters. Let's just say E for N10. That's fine. Just type that here and turn and we'll just say uh, if uh, game state equals state dot player which essentially means it's the player's turn um, and then what we'll do is we'll just say game state equals state dot AI like that uh, and by the way so I do apologize I, I can't remember if I put this in the video or not but in room combat if we've got a creation code we just want to put a comma here, and then we want to put AI there. We're just creating a new state for the AI, obviously. So, we're just going to say if game states play, we're going to switch it to the AI, to the AI sorry. But we're not going to code the AI in this episode, so we're going to just um, ignore that for now. And then what we do, so, um, so we we'll pressed E, and now we're going to restart our own tent because we can't switch it to the AI yet because there isn't one. So what we're going to do then is we're just going to say with um, power player and we'll go attacked equals false and moved equals false. In fact I kind of like that being the other way around but I guess it doesn't matter. Alright so now we we actually have a turn based system now you see so let's just make sure that works. Should do. Alright then, so come on Deadpool, uh, yeah, we can still select him, but obviously he can no longer move or anything, however, if we hit E, now we can, that's smashing actually, was E? Okay, no, that's alright. Uh, so yeah, let's just keep going, and let's make sure the attacking works as well the way we want it to. Yes, it does, alright, sweet, so, can't attack twice, can't move after we've attacked, alright, I like that, that's pretty good. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that guys, and hopefully you're ready to start AI development. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Hey guys, Lost here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you're new and want more content like this, and please give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Catch you guys later.